We are now living in times where the computations are everywhere. You take your phone, your phone has more computing capabilities than the supercomputers that I was using during my PhD uh, more than 30 years ago. So over the last few decades, life science has transformed from a primarily experimental science to one highly dependent on bioinformatics, modeling, simulation and data in general. Now this is challenging because on the one hand, all these experts, just as good as many of us are on life science, were equally untrained when it comes to computers. COE is a center of excellence for high performance computing. I think a very clever idea from the Commission because we are facing a new generation of computers that every day are more and more and more difficult to use. BioXL was established in 2015 as the scientific and technological innovation hub in Europe for computational biomolecular research. The vision of BioXL is to put extreme scale computing at the heart of life science research. This will allow us to offload a lot of the work that is currently being done experimentally to the computers. Now, our mission and aim are to uh, provide better and better performing software to a large user community. We are focusing on European-based uh, software. If we think about software in Bioxel, there are like three big groups of software. One is Chromax, then there is Haddock, and our role is in a kind of interface between this software, other software, and the final user which are the BioXL building blocks. Those building blocks are basically modules that are wrapped around a variety of software, and these modules can be combined into workflows. And this allows to build reproducible workflows to allow reproducible research. BioXL is also training these users so that they can learn how to use the tools that BioXL develops. And at the same time, when doing all these activities, BioXL is trying to create a community around the tools it develops and computational biomolecular research. Computational research is challenging. On the one hand, it's really easy to be seduced to just producing more floating point operations to show that we're achieving a particular scaling. The way BioXL is leading this is that we're making sure that our software is better at exploiting all the advances and the diversity we're seeing in hardware. So by making software uh, better in terms of performance, by making software better in terms of facility of use, by training better our users, we have been increasing the impact of this kind of research. One of the strongest features of BioXL is that we were able to cover the entire spectrum of user interactions, from undergraduate students coming to one of the workshops or summer schools we're organizing, but also to industry. Somebody working in a particular pharma company and then might need a new functionality, or they need professional training that goes significantly beyond standard training. They need to be able to talk to the experts. Historically, we had had much less access both to data and computational power. I think that will drive the future more data-driven pharmaceutical research with sim molecular simulations, with AI machine learning, and with a lot of new data generation. Basically, we really try to push the border how we can use machine learning, AI, and physics-based modeling to deliver clinical candidates faster. Computational strategies and technologies are very important, especially in the early discovery stage of the drug delivery process, because it helps accelerate the process of drug discovery, especially in the hit finding and um, lead optimization stages. With experiments, you cannot access resolution that you can with MD simulations and molecular models. I have been part of various training programs organized by BioXL for both biomolecular simulations, training programs related to Gromax and BioXL building blocks that has helped me immensely on how to model the biomolecular systems, how to run these simulations, and also how to automate these simulations using the different tools like BioXL building blocks. I've learned Gromax actually a couple months ago. It helps me to understand the chemical nature of uh, the peptide I'm simulating in terms of the, the hydrogen bond frequency, the distances between the atoms so that I can say how it behaves in the solvent that it is in. We currently work on uh, two new generation antibiotics. One is called uh, Taxobactin. It was recently discovered about seven years ago. 
In this study, we try to understand how taxobactin is working or killing the bacteria. We want to understand this at an atomic level, for which NMR is great because you can get atomic level insights to the structure and the dynamics of the, uh, of the drug. And this is where computational studies really help us because they help us to visualize the data that we gain from NMR and input that in Haddock to generate a complex structure of the drug. And that helps us to understand how they are structurally associated with each other and also how they uh, are bound on the surface of the bacterial membrane, for example. If you look at all the software that, that we are developing in terms of applications, you find a lot of application in the life science area, but also drug design, binding of drugs to proteins to develop uh, new medicine, antibody antigen interactions, but also food. So optimization of enzymes uh, for food production. And of course, uh, over the last two years, uh, all the software has been heavily used for COVID-19 related research. There are 2,500 more papers from other groups in the world there. We have enabled their work on COVID through the work, software we have written. COVID demonstrates why a center of excellence is needed. We adapt our workflows that were, at this time we were developing workflows for other things, and in a week we rebuilt all these workflows. And this is the advantage of the building blocks, and that we can know, yes, what happened in future evolutions of the virus. The infrastructure is now ready, and can be used by anyone again without the specific knowledge. Advances in hardware development and access to these massive supercomputing resources will allow in future that by using AI, big data analytics, computational modeling and simulation, that we develop much faster uh, new drugs, that we improve personalized healthcare for the benefit of society. One thing that we see now a lot, and I think it's artificial intelligence, a lot of it is still a black box. So, and it's important, I think, uh, for the work that we are doing for drug design to also understand things and understand how things are working. These are exceptionally challenging scientific research problems that BioXL is addressing. And by addressing them, we are on the one hand creating knowledge in our scientific fields, but we're also making Europe the leader in computational research itself.